gospel unto Abraham. Galatians 3.8, again, the word gospel doesn't mean exclusively the saving gospel. It's good news, glad tidings. What were the glad tidings that were given to Abraham? What was the gospel that was given to Abraham? I don't know how the guys preach it, but just like I said, reboot for a second. Let's look at this clearly. Look at Galatians 3.8, where it mentions the gospel being preached unto Abraham. Uh, Galatians 3, 8, And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Now notice what it doesn't say, which we all say it says. Right. And you can apply it if, if you want. For, I don't know why you would if you know this. But preached before the gospel. It doesn't say preached before the gospel of Jesus Christ unto Abraham. It just says, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. And what it was it what was it saying? What was that gospel? In thee shall all nations be blessed. That was the good news. Abraham in you, all nations shall be blessed. That's right. Pretty simple. That's all there is to it. That was the good news that was preached to Abraham. That's it. You want to draw a chart? <laughs> Build mountains? <laughs> Look on the other side? You know, I go ahead. I mean, that's all right. Some of those things are helpful. But I'm saying, if you if you just look at what things are saying, it's like, wow, it really is that simple, brother? Well, yeah, pretty much. If we just look at the Bible, it's pretty simple. Amen. Our religion blinds us sometimes. Our preconceived notions right. blind us sometimes. You know, am I saying, oh, Abraham didn't know Jesus was coming? I'm not saying nothing. All I'm saying is, I know what the good news was that was given to Abraham and it was that all nations shall be blessed yeah. in thee. Were they blessed in him? Amen. Of yeah. course, because that nation became Israel, which is where the, yeah. the lion of the tribe of Judah came from. That's Jesus Christ. That's where the Bible came from. From the, from the nation of Israel. Of course we're all blessed. And they Amen. are blessed through Abraham. Right. What Abraham knew, ask him. I mean, you don't have to wait till you see him, but... Give me more Bible before we start getting way off in the you know blue land, man. Just creating stuff out of nowhere. Amen. It makes good preaching because most people are just like, I don't feel like arguing against that, so it sounds good. You know, it's too hard to go figure if what he said is true or not. Yeah, amen, brother. Yeah, no, man. It's just really the good news that was given to Abraham is that in thee shall all nations be blessed. Yeah, it's pretty simple. That's another that's another glad tiding that you find in the Bible. The fourth gospel is the gospel of resurrection of life to the Old Testament saints in paradise. Look at 1 Peter 4, 6. Remember where Jesus went to preach unto the spirits in prison? 1 Peter 4, 6. We were talking about in Sunday school, Jesus being the judge of the quick and the dead. Look at verse 6, 1 Peter 4, 6. For, thi for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Right. Look at the uh, same book, back up just a couple verses there, chapter 3, verse 19. Mm. What is this talking about here? You have to get context. We'll start at verse 19, then we'll read our way back down to 6 of oh, chapter 4. Uh, verse 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, those that were in captivity. Verse 20, there were good guys and bad guys in captivity, really. Abraham's bosom was, they were kind of captive there. They weren't captive against their will, but they were still captive. They were not free to go anywhere. They were stuck in Abraham's bosom in paradise. There were others that were, they were in hell. They're all captives down there. Maybe he preached the bowl. Verse 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was of preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also save us, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, uh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him, and so forth. And you get all the way down to verse 6 of chapter 4. For this cause is the gospel preached also to them that are dead. That's who it's talking about, those spirits that are in prison. And of course, Jesus Christ in, uh, in Ephesians 4, 8, if you go back to Ephesians, we don't normally, I really personally don't like to jump around like this too often, but I mean we're dealing with this everlasting gospel of an angel in Revelation 14, 7, and to even put it in his proper perspective, you got to understand that there's different gospels, different good news in the Bible. I mean, hey, I mean, I got good news, I saved money on my car insurance. Amen. <laughs> Good tidings, good news, glad tidings. There's lots of glad tidings in the Bible. We're only giving you the ones that the word gospel is even used. Right. Look at all the other places where good news would come to a guy, and the word gospel ain't even used there. Well, that's a gospel. It's still good news. Uh, Ephesians 4. Look at verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts, gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it that, or what is it, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might come on And then he gets back, in. that was a parenthetical part there, he gets back to what the gifts are, apostles, prophets, and so forth. Jesus Christ went to hell. That's right. He descended in the lower parts of the earth. Acts chapter 2 bears this out as well. He preached to the spirits in prison. Then he led captivity of captive. He took those saints that were the Old Testament saints that couldn't go to be in heaven with God because their sins hadn't been paid for by Jesus Christ yet. Their sins were covered under the law and they had to go wait. And Abraham was Luke 16 and read it. The good guys are in the middle of the earth, right across the gulf from the bad guys that are in hell. So that ain't heaven. That's Abraham's bosom. It's paradise. Jesus called it paradise. I shall be with me to stay in paradise, he told the thief. He goes down there, he preaches to the spirits of prison, and then he leads them first fruits. That's the first fruits. That's like a mini rapture where he led those Old Testament saints, and finally they got to go be in heaven, what you and I call heaven, the third heaven where God resides. Mm -hmm. This is what was preached down there in the heart of the earth. This good news that he preached to the saints. Now, are you going to tell me he went there and preached, you, you must repent and be born again? They're already dead. Amen. <laughs> but if he preached the gospel to them, what was it? Hey, I came, buddy. It's time to get out of here, fellas. Hurrah! You know, I paint the picture, man. I, some of you heard me say it's institute or Sunday school or whatever. But man, he told that thief, this day I, thou shalt be with me in paradise, right? Amen. So here's Jesus. He goes down. He goes into the fire park. You know, I don't know how long he's there or whatever. This thief pops up in paradise. You know, he's like, man, am I dead? Man, I sure got off that cross. This is awesome. You know, and there's Abraham. Oh man, there's David. Mike, is that you? All these people are talking to him or whatever. He's like, This is all in my head, okay? So just play along with me. I want to put it in your head because he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> play along now. Come on, head all. So here's this here's this thief, this ex thief, who's now in Paris. <coughs> and these other guys have been sitting there. 1,500 years. Man, you know, when's Jesus coming? When's Jesus coming? When's this whole thing? When are we going to get out of here? How long are we going to sit here and watch all these people suffer and fire? How long are we going to be here? And he's talking on, he's chasing them down. Hey, man, Abraham, shut up, kid. I got business to take care of. David, David, you know, shut up, kid. I got business to take care of. Listen, guys, Jesus is going to meet me here today. Hey, man. man. man if you were locked up for 1,500 years, what good news that would be? Woo! Glory! 
Can you hear the buzz of the crowd down there in paradise? Hurrah! Hurrah! Do you think the hallelujah chorus is something? Amen. That gives me goosebumps. Can you imagine the roar of that crowd?